Welcome to Rooster Radio, a broadcast dedicated to supporting and promoting local artists in the Gaston County and surrounding areas. sit down a few weeks back and I spent like an entire Saturday afternoon in my office just going back through my calendar and adding every band that's ever played here to a playlist for that their genre so now I have genre playlists that we're using on the PA now nice. uh, for in between bands and before and after shows and stuff and it's kind of cool because like you know my goal is to get the streams up for everybody and I just now you just gotta stuff. update it as they release new stuff I do so so I'm following everybody so when every day when I open it if there's a new release it pops up on the home the screen release radar. Yeah, yeah release radar yep. and I just I mean I, before I even listen to it I'll go add it and then I'll go listen to it but, uh, I don't know how many times I've walked in here to disease what? plan. I wish I wish there was an I wish there was a better way to like share the playlist because like I when I made them I, I made this post about like here's here's you know what's happening in your local scene here's the different playlists and it's just like a link to the playlist screenshot it put your link in the comments yeah well I mean like redirects are getting, redirects are getting buried yeah. Yeah, in the algorithm. If you're yep. if you're redirecting off of face off of Facebook or Instagram, they get buried in the algorithm. Have you ever noticed on your la- on a laptop or desktop when you click a link from Facebook when you when it opens the link, it's got this long URL yep. that's still connected to Facebook. So yep. one of the things I started doing a couple months back, whenever I book shows and I, I put the description on my ticketing site, and it's the same description I put on the website. Well, what I've started to doing is I'll put the description with the, the ticket and the door information, and then underneath that, I list every band and I link to their link tree. If they don't have a link tree, I link to their website. If they don't have that, sometimes it's just an Instagram link, whatever. But whatever, you know, you go to, to go to that, I have to, like, redo the URL. I have to, like, refresh the site to yep. get, like, the actual link without the, the Facebook connection, which, you know... But Whatever. even now, it's getting hard to put YouTube and Spotify links on Facebook and any social media. It just won't show it. It'll it, say page It's really unfound. annoying that Instagram doesn't let you put links in like that. Yes. That's that's really really annoying. Because I mean, ultimately, my my goal is to spread the word. You know, my goal is to like, get people to check these like, get these websites hits, get these streams up for bands, and like you know, if you guys release a new song. The only way I have to share it is to put this link. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. And that's why we do it in the comments. Yeah. And on Instagram, the only way you can do it is if you do it in stories. Mm-hmm. That's it. And yeah. in bios. And yeah, got, in the and, bios. And, they're, and it's character limited. So they're super long URLs that you're talking about. you yeah. got to go to tinyurl or bit.ly or something else mm-hmm. to shorten it. Yep. And then those expire. So if you're running an ad, right? So say you run an ad. <laughs> sorry, I got you. No, you're good. Uh, say you run an ad for 30 days. Um, then you're looking at that link expires after 21 days if you're not on a paid premium plan. It's all it's, it's gotten crazy. Yeah, well, what so, I've been so. well, what I've been thinking about doing is putting a uh, you know when you go to our website on the home page there's a there's a Spotify like um, embedded widget yep. that that links to the podcast. And I was thinking about putting another widget up to like link to a playlist or two or something like that. that. I don't work know too. I, it's, it's just the it's, algorithms and everything change so much in the way anymore. yeah I mean Wednesdays used to be a dead day and now they're a premium day like it just it jumps around so much see I don't know if it's if I'm right or not but I've got like a process at the, early in the week on Monday I do the um, you know, this week at the rooster where I've got like a template mm-hmm. that I plug in what we're doing that week and then I tag all the bands and list what we're doing and share that on both socials. And then on Tuesday, I do basically the same thing, but I do it with all of the flyers. Instead of just the one thing, it's, you know, here's the five flyers for Tuesday's this Tuesday's been a very good day for algorithm and, artists. So. And, and so, and that's, I kind of try to get the word out early in the week. And then Ariel, she does the reels and, yep. and the stories yep. and stuff. And 
it seems to be working. I, I mean, I, I really don't have a, a, a concrete way of knowing if any I of mean, this is working. So you if you look at your professional, like... That big confusing dashboard that you have yeah. to have a yes. computer science degree to understand? <laughs> but it'll tell you what your views are, how much you've grown as in followings, 28 days, 60 days, Well, what days, I mean is I don't know days. if any of that's translating into tickets being bought. Right, yeah. like that, that's the part that I don't really have a, a good answer for. We're, we're, seeing, we're starting to see a more steady, you know, like last night we had Blackwater Drowning. Yeah. Love those guys, right? Yeah. You know, the pre-sales were garbage. Like I saw the pre I was like, fuck. Like, like this sucks but then we ended up with a room full of people mm -hmm. so like I just I don't know what motivates people to buy tickets a lot of people are waiting until the last minute yeah. and or buying at the door because honestly the COVID thing when everybody was waiting for refunds for all these shows they had bought tickets for like people just stopped buying those advanced tickets hey, Kill I mean at Killicoy though, they're dealing with it right now too you know they've got their big show coming up for their, their one show a year they do and um, they're, they're like oh, we're, I don't know what's going to happen their pre-sales are in the toilet yeah mm -hmm. I mean and it's like that across the board yeah. like even you know even with the, the bigger like the festivals you know, we're not seeing a lot of pre-sales but then we're seeing a lot of people come to the show so yeah. you know if that's the way it is it's the way it is it just it just it's just uh, like another layer of stress for you know for, as, for, you for me a as a venue owner. owner. Yeah. You know, it's like it's it's yeah. nice to know in advance that you're going to have a big crowd. You know, for you know, if nothing else, just to plan better with staffing and stuff. Yep. You know, there's nights where you know Ariel will come in and and it's like she'll be like, "Do I need to be here?" Right. Yeah, it's like because you know you don't want to talk to. A, I mean, not that I don't want to talk to a crowd, but it's you don't get as much interaction back from a teeny crowd right. as you would a bigger one. So it's kind of like, what, what's the point? The bands can introduce themselves at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's nights where I'll have a lineup, and, and I just know I need to have <clears throat> Mama back there in the green room. <laughs> it just, just by knowing who these bands are. <laughs> she has new sayings to use back there now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, pretty, that was pretty funny. What the hell? Fuck yourself? No. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, hot waffle is my favorite. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I made a whole bunch of stuff that said that too, just because it was funny. <laughs> nah, I, I was having this conversation with um, the. Uh, I went and spoke with the head of the radio station at the college here, um, and I'm trying to find a creative way to work with the the college radio station because. You know, it gives a, them experience and it gives you content. Well, well, yeah. So like the, the students there, like you know, our Ron, our producer, and we've talked about it before. You know, he, he started here as an intern. He, he needs his hours now. He's an employee there, and, and, he, and he produces the show. Yes. Sorry, I just realized that somebody who used to work there just got his radio job back there at Gaston College. Yeah. Jay, Jason. Yeah. yeah. So. There's, it makes sense to work with that program because we can both And it can benefit. pull some attention from the college crowd. Right. But they're, because it's a school, it's, a, it's like a non like it's a weird uh, category that they're in, and the FCC rules dictate that they can't, they can't promote our events. We're a for-profit business. I can purchase an ad that they can run and even that there's limited language that can be right. used so it's like they have this reach of you know tens of thousands of people that that listen and i'll grant you this that's not our demographic you know it's it's an older crowd that okay. listens but it's still it's still a tool in the toolbox right but uh we, we were talking about staffing because again because they're a publicly funded school yeah, they're limited. They're limited yeah. resources. And then when you do find people, it's hard to find people that want to work. You yeah. know, that was part of our conversation was like the the, you know, the younger students that are in the program now, like they're just showing up just expecting things to happen. And, you know, so we were having this conversation about how you know I have been with staff. And the first six months I was open, I was basically doing everything yeah. because I didn't I never advertised I think I advertised one time that, hey, I'm looking for bartenders. I posted that on Facebook one time right before we opened. But I don't advertise jobs because nothing here is really a full-time job. Like, you right. know, like The nature of what we do is so different. <clears throat> I've been very patient allowing you know, the people to come to me. And you know, Ariel early on you know, took up the, the, the market stuff and then just gradually just started taking more responsibility for it. And she just, I mean, she literally just took it, just decided that she's going to start doing this. And, and, and now she's, you know, 
Ariel, Justin, and me run this place. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to put it all on my back anymore. And it just happened organically and naturally. And <clears throat> that's, I, that's my philosophy. Now, if I owned a restaurant, I wouldn't have that luxury. Like, right. like I realize that I'm fortunate in that this type of business lends itself to that type of philosophy. So, Because you need yeah. people in this industry that love the music, love what they're doing. Passionate. It ha otherwise, the people that come here aren't going to have a good time. Yeah. Because it's a whole vibe. You can feel the vibe, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Get out of my Sorry, I was taking my text. I made sure he got home okay. So we're talking to Missy and Travis. Um, if you don't know who they are by now, Missy is the head of creative music management. Travis is the lead singer of Scars Remain. Thank you both for being on the show. Appreciate it. Well, thanks um, for having us. Travis, man. Yeah. Um, we've got Rooster Olympics coming up, so we'll just we'll just kick things off there. Uh, and we'll talk about Rooster Olympics. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, May 25th. I pulled it back a month. Last year we did it in June. It was really fucking hot. So, <laughs> so we're going to do it in May. Won't <laughs> be as hot. Won't be as hot. <laughs> I'm as still hot. sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a roof this time. You're good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Missy has put together an incredible lineup. Let's start with the lineup. Let's start with the music. since that's I what actually have the set times. Oh, no. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you to kind of go over that. And then if we can get a graphic, maybe we can get Ron to put one up on the screen. So how's the day going to go for music? Doors are at 12. We're going to do the national anthem at 125. At 1.30, we're going to have low inside starting the day. And then we're going to head outside with Devil May Die. They're out of Virginia. Virginia Beach, I believe. Yes. Uh, then we're going to head back inside for Sleepless Denver. Followed by Nova Omega, Head Trip Trauma, 50 Flies, Echoes of Humanity, Neighborhood Alien, Sunbreak, To Begin Anew, Shallow Signals, and then we're going to take a little break and do some drawings because we are having a raffle for a Jackson guitar and some other signed merch from the bands. Um, then we're going to have Dove Cage outside, Lords and Liars on the inside stage, and then we're going to finish it off with Scars Remain. <laughs> so that means you got to pace yourself all day. <laughs> or I just prep myself. <laughs> oh, is that what we're calling it? No, I'm just yeah, I'm kidding. No, okay. yeah. What a lineup. Um, and what I love about what you did with this lineup is you've this is truly regional. Mm -hmm. like, we've got everything from Virginia to Georgia. Yep. And you know, Sunbreak coming out of Georgia, they were here back in January. They, they were, blew me away. Yeah, they were they, they were a amazing. surprise. Like yes. I knew they were good. I listened to their music. Wasn't ready for that live performance. It was and I awesome. know they also got put on um, that throwdown in the campgrounds in yeah. Georgia. He's they got added with week. what nonpoint yeah. drowning pool. Good for them. Yeah. So. Good for them. Yeah. And then um, Lords and Liars is my God. They're unique. They yeah, are yeah. unique's a great word. Like they they were here. Um, when was that show? Um, Christmas. Christmas show. Yeah. And you know. They show up, the dude, like, very unassuming looking people, you know, like, I didn't even know he was in the band. He just kept coming up to get natural lights and, uh, <laughs> and you know, talk to him for a minute. And the next thing I know, he's on stage and he just erupts into this just it, it eruption of entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, what is happening right now? You know, I mean, you can hear a little bit of Primus influence yep. and Tool influence. They've got the big cello. Amazing band, like like like. They are. I've had them on a few of my shows, and I I love them as humans. They are just amazing people, and like for the Christmas show, I got offered them gas money because they came from Raleigh. Yeah. And they were like, "Nope, all the money goes to the charity. Do not ever pay us. Like we are doing this because we love working with you guys. They are just." amazing people all together awesome. yeah i mean I've, we've talked a little bit before about how great it is to like doing what we do like we do get some of the most generous most loving kind people to work with you, know, you get your occasional assholes but they kind of weed themselves out you know they don't we last do. very long <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh sleepless denver was just here for the makes my blood dance show they were they were kind of like punk poppy yeah yeah, yeah. so when we were choosing the bands, we wanted a diverse lineup. We wanted more genres brought in because Dub Cage being one of mine, they're not in that metal yeah. scene. And they were like, we need something to flow with us too. So 
they brought um, Shallow Signals and Sleepless Denver to my attention and were like, hey. Right on. And Dove Cage has just been putting out new song after new song lately. Like, yeah. you know, they, 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 they've released, what, a new single Yesterday. for the last three months? Yeah. yeah. They've think, got, um, I think, nine more to go. Yeah. We so. just don't make albums anymore. We just, just <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the Nationals, they're yeah. putting out single yeah. after single after single and then dropping an album. Yeah. And it seems to be working for them. It's the, so. way, it's the way people consume media these days. It's yeah. Yeah. They want instant gratis, yeah. gratification. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they're good. The, the songs are great, you know. Yeah, they they're they're killing it. They're killing it with, with the new guitar player and everything, which we'll get to see for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? um, Travis, what's going on with Scars? Uh, we've been quiet a little bit, uh, but not. We're still making noise. If that makes sense. Um, well, I know you've been busy. Uh, me and Missy were talking before the show. You've been busy working with Killer Koi, yep. you know, uh, producing music with them. Yeah, shout out Pangea Creative Group. Um, they, um, you know, they, I call them the Killer Boys, even though they have a girl in the band. <laughs> but, um, no, but we've um, we've really been just kind of diving into the studio, working on our live show, kind of rebuilding some things. Um, we kind of we burnt ourselves out i think to end last year um, yeah. i think last year was one of the the heaviest show years that we've done um and then you know the the that show that shall not be named uh, we won't give them any any shout outs but uh it kind of set us back a little bit so we kind of had to refocus and um you know kind of put our efforts into the right places but uh, no we've got some stuff coming uh, i think that's uh, we're kind of doing a little bit of a genre shift to be honest um kind of getting away from the screamy in your face metal style and kind of gearing things back a little bit and uh i'm intrigued like more traditional hard rock yeah a little bit more on the the it's still it's metal quarry uh but they with some really some pop vibes uh, yeah. kind of thrown in there okay. um That's i'm intrigued nice. to see how people respond and uh you know for me it's a great break because i'm not screaming my face off the whole time yeah <laughs> It's, uh, but yeah, man, we're excited. We're replace disease. <laughs> yeah, we're not playing disease. I know. Not, no. No. <laughs> we are done with that. <laughs> no, but it's, um, it's exciting, man. And, uh, you know, internally, we've just been kind of focused on, you know, how we can get better. And, uh, you know, shout out to our drummer, Jim. He's also got a, his, uh, his other side project that's kind of kicking ass, too. So, um, you know, we're all, we're all just like, expanding and exploring and uh, seeing what we can, you know, kind of put into, put into works because you know the, we're trying to be different but d- not different enough that we're not going to be the same you think yeah. it might be a better word there if you're yeah. evolving a little bit as a band yeah I'd say so um, the, the, it's showing diversity yeah and what Travis's voice is capable of what the band members are capable of because we went rock then metalcore yeah. and we're kind of pulling it back a little bit again because it's good to have that change, especially for him on stage. Yeah. Like, I've noticed when you're screaming hustily, you're just wore out. Yeah. And it's also getting old. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, been doing this for 18 years. It starts to wear on you a little bit. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, we're, and we're down to one guitar player. Um, you know, we're not really looking to add. It's hard enough to put four guys in a room that get along. Um, <laughs> Uh, add to fifth, uh, you know, we're just, um, yeah, evolving. I think it's the perfect word to use for that. And uh, you're just kind of showing some different stuff. We've always said that we don't want to put ourselves in a box when it comes to writing music, right? And then we found ourselves in a box. Yeah. Right? Um, and then trying to break out. I've of been to your band bit. room. It is a box. <laughs> it is a box. <laughs> no, that's now 50, so that's that's 50, 50 Flies band room. Band room. Okay, <laughs> I had thought so when I saw that video, and I was like, wait a minute, that's where Scars was. Yeah. yeah. We, I mean, it just got to a point we were spending so much money uh, in there that it just didn't make sense uh, for us to keep the place because we're only in there maybe a night a week, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we were just spending so much money on that place. And, you know, 50 Flies is at a point where they're doing the same thing. They're evolving, right? Um, you know, if you hear, wait till you hear some of these new songs that are going to be coming from them. <laughs> but, <man>. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, Kevin's voice is incredible and he really gets an opportunity to shine with a lot of the stuff that they're doing right now. So, you know, when the opportunity came up, they were looking for a place, we were looking for a way out. And uh, so we just kind of teed it up because normally that place has a ridiculous wait list to get in there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we kind of teed it up and pass it off to them and they're making the best use of it possible. Nice. So. And you can see all of these new music here at Rooster Olympics on Saturday, May 25th. All day. Doors will be open at uh, noon. You can get tickets on our website right now. 
And please do, because what we're doing is we're raising money for Web Street School. Um, I guess we probably should have led with that. <laughs> so bad at promoting. Um, Web Street School, um, you know, it's a school that, that caters to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, it's the only school like it anywhere near here. And um, they, they always need help because these kids have more needs than, than typical students do. And uh, we, we raised a lot of money for them last year, and we're trying to beat it this year. Um, we're going to have games. Um, D's Balls, a ball-making company, they make um, – I swear the last they, they make, everybody's yeah. giggled as soon as you say it. <laughs> it's hard to say it without – Like, how, how, can you, how do you get to do that with a straight When face? I sent it's, the it's logo all... to Kevin to put on the flyer, he was like, is this real? <laughs> I was like, yes. But shout out to <laughs> Jimmy – shout, shout out to Jimmy Paschke. Um, he's, a, he's a drummer. He's a, a regular here at our open mics, and he's got this company that makes – you know, ping pong balls and golf balls and stuff. Oh, yeah. And the the reason they call it these balls is to is to raise awareness for testicular cancer. That, oh, that's, that's kind cool. of the passion behind the project. Any profit they make kind of goes to one of their employees uh, or associates or whatever is an icon. Yeah. And the other day a post came through and they were like, "It's so cool to see icon and these balls on the same lineup." And I was like, "Hi, I'm the promoter." Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, so it's really cool. They're, they're going to come in, and they're going to actually run the game portion. So last year, oh. I'll admit, I did a terrible job of running the actual games, mainly because I was trying to get people to sign up in advance, and, and I had so much to do. Jimmy has graciously stepped in to take this over, so he'll, they'll be running the, the, the beer pong, the cornhole, the pencil fighting. And instead of trying to get people to sign up early, we're just going to have a booth set up and you just, the day of, if you want to play in the games, you go sign up, and the games will start around 3 or 4 o'clock. We haven't really set a time yet. We want to see how many people show up early. And then they're going to run the games, and then everyone that participates will get to participate, or everyone that participates in the games will be in a tournament of rock, paper, scissors, and we will do the final four of that on stage, you know, uh, probably right after the raffles. Um, we don't want to interrupt too much of the music, so... Shout out to Andy, uh, finished in second place. That is a reminder. Shout out to Sarah and Brian, <laughs> Damn, my friends. Player. That was so much fun to watch. Yeah, I, I got Ella said show. she's coming back for the trophy again. Oh, she's coming to get it? All yeah, right. but well, she has to come defend it. Yeah, she has to come to defend get, her, her title. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but, Spoon said he's taking it. So. <laughs> if, Spoon, if Spoon and Frank are on the cornhole boards, no, it's, it's Spoon and Rob. Oh, okay. All right. Well, at least there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Spoon was like, Rob, you're mine this time. <laughs> yeah, so, and it's all, you know, it's all, you know, to raise money and raise awareness for West Street School. And last year I charged $10 to participate. This year I'm not requiring anyone to pay to play games. Donation. Anyone can play. But if you want to donate some money to the school, that'd be really cool of you. Yeah. Just saying. Um, $5, $10, $100, I don't care. Just let's help these guys out. Absolutely. Um, and, and there's just any... Um, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about uh, creative chaos. Um, you know, there will be food trucks. You know, we'll have um, a vendor market, uh, and, and we'll get to that in a minute. We'll, Aaron will talk a little bit about the vendors, but before we do that, talk a little bit about creative chaos because we were talking before the show, and the merch business is booming right now. Yeah, I also own a small merch business. My main goal with that was to be able to help local bands without having them big minimum orders of you have to order 50 of these to get it at this price. Um, we've come up with some 12 by 12 aluminum signs with a lot of the band's logos that have offered to do this. And they're gonna be autographed at the show and we're gonna do a Chinese auction style. And you'll be able to put tickets in what you wanna win, buy yeah. the tickets right there at the booth. Um, I know Scars is participating. Um, to begin a new is participating, 50 Flies. And we'll have other samples of our merch there as well. We do tumblers. We do all sorts of laser engraving. Uh, we had a lot of bands lately that sell out on the first night they have that new merch. Yeah. So it's definitely good for the bands. And it's another way that we help support those bands because we try to keep our prices yeah, I mean, minimum. most most nights here, bands are making more off merch than we're making off the door. Yeah. So, and that's why merch is important. If you're a band look that wants to get some merch done, reach out to Missy and Creative Chaos because they can hook you up. They they can hook you up, and and, and we have a network of printers, and you know, 
flyer designers. makers, yeah. designers, we all work together to create the best for our scene. Because honestly, if you're walking around, I know somebody called me one day and they were like, I walked into a show, the first shirt I saw was a Scars Remain shirt. The second one was a 50 Fly shirt. And yeah. I was like, yep. <laughs> well, and I can say from our perspective, uh, from Scars, before we had the blessing of Missy coming into our lives, uh, we were a fledgling business. Let's call it that. <laughs> uh, the, you know, uh, well, the, <laughs> man, uh, more merch was given away than sold. Let's just put it that way. And, uh, you know, she's honestly made us profitable to the point where now Scars is completely self-sufficient. And um, it, it's cool it's to been, see. what, six years? Yeah, six years. Yeah. Turn this thing into a legitimate business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I started with Scars. You know, I started just as their merch girl. And I started networking around. Yeah, we're attached to the hip forever. Yeah. <laughs> And I, so, I think yeah, we're related. <laughs> so, so, so you, we will be raffling off some of the Creative Chaos merch in addition to a Jackson guitar and some other donated items. And, and like she said, the, the Chinese auction, like, like silent auction kind of yep. deal where instead of just buying a ticket and then getting what you get, you can buy a ticket for the specific item. And then we will have people going around selling tickets for the guitar as well. Oh, yes. Yep. So it, there's a higher chance of winning this way as well. And with the guitar, you can have the band sign it. You can. Sorry, I started having it. I was like, that means Ricky's just going to win it all. <laughs> yeah, Ricky does have to a rabbit. To be fair, she's yes, only she won one yeah, guitar. Does. Yes, but she always wins something. She always wins something. Some she does. Yeah, she, yeah. she absolutely does. But she also buys the tickets in advance. Yes, she does. Because yeah. we do offer for our larger items to you know buy those raffle tickets, and she'll buy a few every time she gets paid. Mm -hmm. To support the cause, yeah. and you know she gets a reward out of it. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Boy, does she! She's and definitely got a positive ROI. Like he said, <laughs> a rabbit's foot. She got a rabbit's foot somewhere. <laughs> well, she deserves it too. She's one of the most supportive. Uh, she for, is. For, uh, for the of the rooster. Yeah. Oh, she's the, she's a constant supporter of CMF. the rooster virtual street team page. Is Ricky is the reason I created it because mm -hmm. Ricky just was constantly just yeah. sharing stuff all the time. I'm like, we need something like this. Yeah. She's a constant supporter of all the bands on CMM roster, yep. you know. Yeah, she's exactly who we built this place for. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now, Errol, you want to talk a little bit about Misfit Market? I know there's still a few spots open, but yeah. you want to talk a little bit about the vendors we do have? We do. We have, and what I love is like, we just, we come straight off of the merch and your small business and we have other small businesses in the Mississippi market. That industrial mayhem is giving us a a thing to raffle off as yes. well. I, I spoke with them at Headbangers Ball. I love Aaron. He's and the Aaron walked up to me. He was like, "What can I do to help? Nice. Like, can I do this?" And I networked with a lot of the vendors yeah. last weekend. Well, a lot of the vendors they make band merch too. Like, to, like for the show this evening, one of the vendors makes merch for them. Yeah. So, right. and it's just. I love seeing bands use small businesses. So it's like small business and small business. It go hand in hand. But we will have um, lots of vendors. Um, I have secured the face painters again for this year. Nice. Um, because there was such a big request, and I love seeing the guitarist from Dove Cage get on the stage with his, <laughs> his face painted logo and all it over And it sweat off at the same time. <laughs> but um, we will have, oh my gosh, let me look at my list. Uh, Hobby gonna, Life. Yep, we got some 3D printers. We've got people who make shirts and stickers. So Bunny. Soaps. Um, yes, we, we'll have two people named Bunny out here. This time. <laughs> <laughs> um, soaps. Um, we have a... Um, oh, one of my the newest favorites, and I hate to say favorites, but she's a tattoo artist locally, and she engraves onto mirrors with an engraving oh. gun. Whoa. Dude, that's dope. Yes, and I mean, her stuff is phenomenal. But um, it's a great opportunity to get something <laughs> custom made. Yes, a great gift. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, Unique. we'll have we'll have lots of like lots of different ones. We'll have um, Love You Bunch's candles. She was out here last year for that, and her candles are great. And then we've got a couple three D printers, um, some soaps, um, and some new people that I have not. I've seen their pictures of stuff, but I haven't seen like I haven't met them in person. So we have one person I added yesterday, and I think she, um, sorry, uh, <laughs> but she makes like little, little uh, polymer clay cryptids mm -hmm. and stuff, and so I'm excited to see nice. those. Uh, and I'm just, oh gosh, and we got a few spaces open, so who knows what else we could have. Yeah. 
Yeah, lots of cool stuff at the vendor market. And then, of course, food trucks on site as well. Um, we'll have Crave USA, which makes great burgers and hot dogs. We'll have Boba Tea. What's popping Boba Tea? Is, I'm so excited to have yeah. Blue Ocean Delights back. Blue <laughs> yeah, those guys are killing it. Right? Blue Ocean Delights. They're the ones, they do um, like shrimp tacos and ceviche. ceviche. And Phenomenal. And if, it, if it gets hot so out good. there, trust me, ceviche is the way to go. Dude, yeah. some ceviche and a michelada. Now you're speaking my right? language. <laughs> Man. Because you, you get full, but you don't feel that weight and right. you don't get like, Ugh, what I eat. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I've started like. I, like with with food trucks, I try to get food trucks in that aren't so like just straight fried food. Yes, yeah. yeah. It, it weighs you down. It makes it the does. day. I mean, kind of. It makes you, you feel nasty. Yeah, yeah. Especially in that heat. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you want to just take a nap. But you said you eat that ceviche and you're like, oh great, I feel great. You'll find Travis in the green room passed out on the couch. Like, <laughs> so. I can't tell you the last time I was able to take a nap. Thank you, children. <laughs> you still got a few more years of that too. Yeah, well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's there's no excuse not to come you know it's you know it's saturday may 25th it's an all-day fest and it's for a great cause and you know you're going to be supporting lots of local businesses and drink beer yeah uh, the bar will be open uh, you know support us too <laughs> we are running a contest on the uh, cmm page where you go around to where we've put posters out at the local record stores take a selfie with it Tag the rooster and tag create, creative music management to uh, be entered into a contest to win tickets, yeah. swag from the rooster, CMM, um, entry into the drawing for the guitar. I'm actually about to put one of those flyers tomorrow at um, the Misfit Market booth that we have at yeah. the Hippity Hop Shop. Yeah, so nice. if you see a Rooster Olympics flyer around town, take a selfie with it, post it, tag creative music management, and you could possibly win some stuff. Um, and uh, we haven't really talked about this, but as of today, we're going to be offering a private acoustic performance, uh, the venue of your choosing, uh, to the raffles for that purpose. Uh, that means you can have it well. in your house, yep. or you can have it here. House party or whatever you want to do. <laughs> but a private acoustic performance by Scars Remain. That's, man. And I will tell you, acoustically, I love it. I love it. Who doesn't like, love a good unplugged show? <laughs> you know? Well, I'll, the I'll, first I'll time do. you guys did it yeah. was what with Demon Jones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ron, Ron just made a great point. That that really was the best thing MTV ever did was that unplugged series. Yeah, yeah. That, well, at my really birthday party, you guys did one, and everybody was like, "Wow, we didn't." Because like, if a band <laughs> can't pull off an acoustic set, do they? Are they really that talented? <laughs> yeah, we're not, you're not hiding behind tracks. You know? <laughs> tracks yeah. or distortion. Tracks, right. distortion. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a, it's always good because it's a, it's a fun way to kind of get in, in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's intimate, right? I mean, it's yeah. uh, you kind of strip it back and you kind of really feel uh, the music. And I like taking other people's songs that aren't necessarily intended to be uh, acoustic and really just taking them and making something special out of them. It's just fun. It's just fun. Me against yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and like you said, the intimacy part of that, like that's one of the things I love most about what we do is like. Dealing with these, you know, the locals, the local legends, and and having this scene and having that that intimate, like this community, like all of the goals I wanted to, I set out to achieve. That's what we're doing, and then look, we're creating more opportunity for those types of things. You know, if if I wasn't, you know, if I wasn't the venue owner, I'd try to win that. You know? <laughs> I have you guys at my next barbecue. You could you could still enter the raffle. <laughs> But no, the thing is, is it looks rigged if we win it. <laughs> touche, touche. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't want that. I don't want that at all out there. Yeah, I, I got enough people out there trying to poo-poo what we do. I, I don't, I don't. But uh, that's that is one of the great things about the smaller venues is after the bands get off the stage, the fans can go up and interact. Yeah. The amount of people that walk up to me and go, "Oh my God, like they're such great humans all together." Yes. That's, that's, that's one of my favorite parts of the night. So, I mean, aside from the, the actual music, that after the show when everyone's crowded over here by the merch table taking yeah. pictures and signing stuff, and, you know, how good does that feel as a local musician to, to be asked to sign something? You it's know? a little overwhelming, I will say. And honestly, it kind of catches you off guard. I think the first, I remember the first couple of times that ever happened, and I was like, really? <laughs> me? Me? Uh, but, the, you know, one of the first times I ever came and got you, I was like, um, somebody wants you guys to sign the set list. And he's like, what? What? <laughs> and it's, I was like, uh, yeah, even the bass player. <laughs> no, but it is. It is. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shout out, bass player. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it, it is uh, it is cool though. I mean, um, I mean, especially when your music touches people, right? We've talked about this privately. Music is a universal language, right? Mm-hmm. And um, to know that your music is connecting with people to that level, um, I don't know. It's humbling. Uh, I know it seems the opposite of what it would be, but it is humbling to know that that has impacted somebody's life. I, I, there was a show that we did. You. Um, yeah, it was last year. We did. It's now being referred to as the Red Dirt Revival. Uh, you weren't there for that one, but uh, this guy drove all the way down uh, from Virginia to come to the show in the middle of nowhere at a dirt park, mud park. I right? was there. Oh, oh, you were there. Yeah, sorry. The, the second. <laughs> well, any the the first day you weren't right. No. Yeah. So, and uh, so he he pulls me to the side afterwards, and he was like, "I just want you to know that you weren't your songs that had saved my life," and you know we were talking about what I've become. And a lot of people don't know this about that song particularly is that that song is based off of a suicide note that one of our friends left behind. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, and, you know, to put that into words and to have somebody say that it turned them, that it helped them turn their life around and to know that that person is still here because of a song that you wrote, that's powerful. Shout out to Josh Denton. Right, shout out Josh Denton too, yeah. At least twice a week I'm seeing posts, you know, he's sharing something of scars and just how that is his everyday reminder that, you know, that's family. Yeah. And it gets him through some hard times. And, and as, as a musician to have, to know that that, I wouldn't call it power, but to have that influence and impact on somebody's life is, is special. Um, I don't know. It's I'm something that you can't really take. Like you, ha- you can't take that for granted. Right. Uh, it, to to know that because you know, I'm sure you got into this just because you're an artist. You you just I, I got into want... it because it was my outlet, right? Yeah. Um, I it was a way for me to take the pain and the and the stuff and the weight that I had carried uh, and put it into words. It was an outlet for me, and I never knew that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, it sounds. The thing that saved you could actually save somebody else. You yeah. Know, it's it's like this circular. Kind of full well, circle kind point, of thing. You were told you couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. I had brain surgery in 2016. I was told I was never going to be able to step on stage again. What? Yeah, I, I know this about you. What happened? Uh, I have a it's, it's a birth defect called Chiari malformation. Um, basically, and I know I have a big ass head, no, but uh, my <laughs> brain my brain is <laughs> yeah. You can't find hats big enough for my head. Uh, <laughs> this is an extra large and it's tight. Uh, but the <laughs> shout out creative uh, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta go with the hankies man you gotta uh, start wearing oh, now, how he's, now he's got the bucket hats <laughs> no but you know my doctor um, so basically my brain is too big for my head so it started to push down and put Humble pressure uh, <laughs> on the cerebral spinal fluid I was not getting the, the anyway long story short uh, they have to go in I'm missing a, uh, about a two inch patch of my skull in the back uh, I got a anyway so uh, he told me, he said, you're never going to be able to do that. The pressure you create in your head is going to continue to cause you problems. And uh, I was basically like, I refuse to accept that, you know. And um, funny enough, uh, it was six months after surgery. I was back on stage after being told that I'd never be able to do it again. And uh, here we are. scars remain. Nine years later. Formed. Yep. Now, I never knew that about you, man. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Hey, look, man. Yeah. It's you painful, can, too. <laughs> it is. It sucks sometimes, um, especially on storm days. Tomorrow's going to be rough. But, uh, you yeah, and, and to, you know, anybody that's watching, you know, and, and I think it, it segues perfectly to what we're here for to talk about with Web Street School, right? You know, there's a lot of kids that are out there right now that are dealing with some, some type of disability or told that they're never going to be able to do something. And, you know, ultimately your attitude and your attention to what you want to do, there's no reason you can't. Yeah. And I think it's a powerful statement if you can go and beat the odds, right? And, you know, for people that have been told, you know, that you can't do something and, you know, to go out and be able to physically do it and to prove those doubters or those you know, doctors even wrong is, um, it's special. And, you know, to anybody watching that anything you might maybe dealing with right now, just remember it's okay to not be okay. Um, and, you know, going through that and myself at times, uh, it's a powerful thing to, to pull yourself out on the other side. Growth is, growth is hard. Uh, growth is painful. And, you know, when you're going through these situations, just remember you're not alone. You can always reach out to anyone in SCARS. Creative it's music like looking management. in the mirror, listening to him say these things. Those are, that's, I mean, those are exactly, um, that's exactly how I feel together. about this place and the, the message that I want to get out to people is, you know, you know how many people told me this was a bad idea? 
And, you know, even if this shit went away tomorrow, you know how the impact that we've had on people's lives in just a year and a half of being here? Oh, I've been through it with my dad. He never understood. I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you this last night. I went in the bathroom, and when I came back to refill the toilet paper, I heard this little girl talking to her mom in the bathroom. She goes, Mom, do you think I could be a singer like that one day? And I was like, God, God, I wish Michael was in here right now. (laughs) I just wanted you to be able to hear that because... Just hearing her say that, just having an honest conversation with her mom. Yes, if your mom's watching, show her this. You can be Whatever that singer on that stage. Yeah. And we yeah. love the kids coming to the show. Like that's the highlight of it for right. us. Everybody yeah. knows my kids come to ninety percent of the shows that we do. Yeah, yeah. my and kids. My kids are here if they can be. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if we're local. They're here. <laughs> and that's that's one of the, my favorite things is to, to see the kids out there dancing. I mean, it happens very often here. Yeah. You know, and I've had a couple of, I've, I've heard a couple, and it's usually older people that say these kind of things, but I've had a couple of people kind of shit on us because because we are all ages. Like, I, I think wanna, I did see a post. Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't want to go drinking with kids, and it's like, well, don't come here. Yes, we want you to spend money at the bar, but you don't come here to get shit-faced. No. You come here to be a part of something, to see a show. You know, if you get shit faced, we'll get you home. But you know, the amount of people that walk up to me and they're like, "Your kids are just sitting over there, like happy as can be," and I'm like, "They're used to it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, we're trying to inspire a new generation of artists, you know. And, yeah. and you know, if you know, if that's how you feel, then go to the pool hall. You yeah. know, right. yeah, I never, I never understand why people will shit on a business just because it doesn't suit what they're looking for. There's other places for you to go drink. Yeah. Yeah, look, you don't have to come here and believe me, a lot of people don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at our shows, we try to have stuff for the kids. We have the inflatable instruments. We have, you know, little goodie bags for them every time. Those kid pits are my favorite thing to yes. watch. Yes. My like, team. I love my the kid pits, even at the festivals. Yeah. Like, it's we just, try to pull the kids in and yeah. teach them the right way because that's the next generation of this industry. That's one of my favorite. Like, um, I think it was Bruce Talk seeing. Andy in the middle of the pit. They've created a smaller pit to teach a little boy how to pit to be in the mosh pit. And it was the most precious thing ever. It's so pure. It was so adorable. It, it was. is. Right. It was and so sh- adorable. And I shout know, out I, to Icon. You yeah. know, Icon, the, 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 the amount of family that they instill into, you know, into that organization. And I talked to Spoon about this yesterday. What they built special. Like, you don't find, you're not, you're not going to find a bad apple in that bunch, no. if that makes sense. Yeah. No. And, um, the it's just incredible the to amount see. of love support yeah. and just overall family like and the energy like when these kids yes. get to jump in and they just don't stop i mean i get tired watching them <laughs> and it's like, but i mean yes. their pits are like ring around the rosy but it's still i like when i see the kid pits swarm, i'm like hey there is a kid pit here I'm like don't make me come off the stage <laughs> yeah we have our kid pits our girl pits our regular pits it we incorporate everybody. We had a Macarena pit at last what? year's Bruce Dog. Actually, oh, yeah. at the Wage oh, War right. show yeah. the other yeah. night, me and Tim were doing the Macarena <laughs> in the crowd. He was probably the instigator of the one at Bruce Dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know at Louder in Life last year, there was this little kid, and he, he kept looking into the pit like, like what is this? What are they what doing? Is and the mom was standing there, and I walked over, and I was like, can I like, take him in and show him? Uh-huh. And she was like, are you sure he's going to be okay? I was like, oh, yeah. I promise you. Yeah. So me and Andy Davis got in there with him and just, like, showed him how to do it. And then other people jumped in and got down so that the kid – that's what we're teaching the next generation. And if they fall, we pick them up. I got a few nieces and nephews I would have never had. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, Uncle, I'm Uncle Travis with so many kids, uh, which is cool. I, like, I love it. Yeah, and we say all this, you know, we, we share all this with you to – to let you know, hey, like, it's okay. Bring the kids. Like, yeah. be a part of this community. Whatever's going on. I mean, we've covered a lot of ground today. Uh, I mean, lot, we have know, kids from two years old all the way up. Yeah. And, you know, and if you don't have kids and you're sitting at home and you're lonely, get out. Come to a show. Be a part of the community. Like, I'm never going to stop saying this message that get involved. You know, you might not think it's your thing, but what if it is, you know? Yep. And if you don't experience it, you don't. You you will never get it. Because working like. at Walmart sucks. You know, working for the man sucks, man. Get out and have some fucking fun. I did. I had one of my vendors tell me they were like, "I'm totally." They were. They did Rich Olympics last year. It was uh, gifted, and I was talking to Bunny, and she was like, 
the um that that sense of family and that mm-hmm. love that was at Rooster R- Olympics. She's like, I and it's just love a that. vibe you go off of right. for days afterwards. Exactly. Like, yeah. She's like, it was like that the whole day. Like nobody, like people were tired, but it was like nobody became jerks when they got tired. Yeah. <laughs> We've made that yeah, statement I mean, that, an icon. I mean, Even true. the kids all get along. Like right. how often do you see a group of mismatched kids all yeah, get along? Yeah, there's, there's no like playground bullies no, or nothing like no. that. Everyone's just here to have a good time. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, it makes me think about how like how much my life changed since I opened this place. Like, I get to carry those highs in. Like, I get. We, you know, typically, we don't do shows on Monday and Tuesday. It's kind of like our days off or whatever. Yeah. And I spend those days recharging because I've just dumped so much of my emotional self into <laughs> yes. what we do. Is it's almost like Monday. I, yep. I I just I don't even answer the phone half the time. I'm just yep. like let me. But those bigger yeah. shows, it gives you that energy and yeah. that enthusiasm to keep going. When you're still talking about it two, three days, a week later, it was a good show. Yeah. 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 And so especially when you... Shout out to Pit Crew. Danny Mazio just hit me up about a project that we had. <laughs> I already know. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks. He, Thanks. Felt, he felt us talking about yeah. it. Yeah. He was your ears ringing yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> ears was burning. Yeah. Danny's going to be here doing photography. Yeah, we yeah. have OMG Love coming Danny. from Pennsylvania yeah. to do photography. Sean... Um, you what's a magazine? How did, works I, was, me, yeah, I, I want to find out the origin story here because OMG just all of a sudden started like, showing up, up on on, on so, stuff, and and um, then they were down here for the Bleeding Arts Ball, and yeah. I got to meet them, and and I was just I just hugged him. I was like, thank you so much, man. Like they are the amazing. Like, Hollywood and Ginger are just but phenomenal. you know they brought they brought like electrolyte packets Dude, in the yeah. green room and like a whole bunch Banana of bag. other stuff. Yeah. yeah, in the green room and for the bands, and I was like. So that that's so actually awesome. how I met them. Yeah. Was really? At that thing that we're not going to talk about. <laughs> they, <laughs> Hollywood Damn walked it. up no. to me and handed me one of the banana bag yeah. things. And I just about passed out from the heat yeah. 30 yeah. minutes before then. And like he just gave me a huge hug. But he was brought into the family by Danny. Mm-hmm. Um, Danny used to work for another media outlet other than Icon. Mm-hmm. And through his networking, he started working with OMG. Yeah. And they just embraced the whole family thing. There's photos they posted yesterday or the day before, and they're candid shots of me and Danny in the crowd at Bleeding Hearts. And we caught them, like, we'd look over oh, and yeah, they'd have their that. camera right at us, and I'd be like, yep, yeah. we're playing this paparazzi game. I do love that they, they also caught that one girl who, I can't remember what band it was, but she, she had pink in her hair, and she was just out there, the whole set, just, they caught her hair, and, yep. like, just the emotion and the, and the energy. In oh, there's shot. more, because they took videos of Danny Mazio jumping into Rob's arms. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so, so he's like, behave, they're really Rob? good at capturing moments. <laughs> they are. And, and, and Danny's great. the same way. I don't yeah. know how many photos I have, just random photos of. Oh. How dare you? I know, right? Why is your phone not on silent? Because it's my boss. Huh. <laughs> Touche. I gotta go to work after this. No. <laughs> well, I, all right. Let's let's wrap it up then. Um, anything else you want to promote while we're here? <laughs> clearly, it's important. <laughs> it's okay. We're all waiting. Put her on, on speakerphone. Put her on speakerphone. Let's do it. Let's just Rob. <laughs> There's Rob's cameo for today. <laughs> <laughs> You'll call back, I'm sure. Save this for bloopers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do have a regular job too. <laughs> it's okay. I have a folder of bloopers of Michael, and it's just oh really? <laughs> no, when you start to like film stuff, then it doesn't quite come out. It's like fuck. <laughs> No, I work I have I'm to, to push go to Raleigh yeah. tonight. So. <laughs> no, I, I will say it's an honor uh, to be able to work these events with you guys. And uh, I'll tell you, man, what you've built here is special. I don't get to get come Thank out you. as much as I would love to be here. Um, it's But what you've built here is special. The sense of community and family in this building, every time I have ever walked through those doors, has been nothing short of special. So, you know, shout out to you guys, you know, for building a, building a, a place here that – is so full of love well thank you for that it started you know it started with just me you know just trying to put this energy out there and it took a long time but you know this what we've created 
there's no way that I would have been able to do this alone. So if it weren't for the, the Ariels and the Justins and the Melissas and the Timmies and everybody, you know, bringing in Melissa, I, I can't I can't say enough about how much I love that I have Melissa running this bar. I can trust her. I mean, we had last night. Uh, you know, Jack Jack Defrost came down. Yeah. He's he's got a kid. He's got he's got to be what six seven years old maybe. Yeah. Little little ginger kid, and he's you know he's he's hot. You know he's he's a rough rough and tough Lucas little is kid. The cutest ever. And and and, <laughs> she, and she just breaks that kid down every time. She she lights up when he comes in, and he you know but I, it's not he's just... gonna have a crush on her. I'm telling you, yeah. he's, gonna have, he's gonna have a crush on Melissa yeah. his whole life. Well, that's what the Halloween show. He brought me and Melissa both little. Aww. pumpkins with candy in it Aww. and we sat and talked he and i talked about spider rings for like at least five minutes <laughs> but the, but you know look, going back to what i said earlier allowing the right people to kind of come to me you know i know i've done the right and thing and that's kind of the way our relationship started yeah with you know i just came in one day and yeah you, you we you, sat you here for met, what yeah, two you drove, hours yeah you drove an hour to have a just to have in a, a conversation <laughs> yeah, just to have a conversation and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's what you know with the catalyst for this beautiful relationship that we have where we get to work together we get to raise money for to, you know we have two events a year where one thing that's close to your heart one thing that's close to my heart we're actually getting to make an impact in, in this community it's just it's and such that's a what i thing. love the most is being able to give back yeah yeah. Like, them are our favorite events is, you know, our Christmas show where we support the domestic violence shelter. That was my baby. Like, that's... And to look at it every year and how much it grows, it it makes it worth all the stress behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, I, I'll trade... I'll, <laughs> the stress of doing what we do is so much better than the stress of anything I did before. Fair. You know, Absolutely. Like, you, don't, you don't get to live your life without stress. There's going to no. be stress, right? But it's well, not as of, stressful if you're doing something you love. It, yeah. If, right. you, and you're you surrounded by the people. Into something, man, it makes that stress a lot easier to deal with. Surrounded right. by the people with the same passion. Yeah. yeah. you got a magnetic personality, Michael, so you you, you attract good people. Just Thank you for saying that. I don't always <laughs> feel that way about me, but okay. That lyric. Oh, magnetic? Oh, sorry. Yeah. But we're just we're just trying to do something good, and you know if people pay attention, that's that's what we're going for. You know, you know it's it's not it's never going to be about me. It's going to be about community, and, and that's the the message I guess we're we're giving here. Um, any other shows you want to shout out that you got coming up? We have one with Witness Marks coming here, June eighth with Venus and Victor. You have no idea how hard that show was to put together. <laughs> I brought you in like halfway through. <laughs> So Venus Invictus has got a new single. They they've been they've been um, they've ha- had to take some time off. There was a health scare for one of the members. It's been dealt with, and now they're 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 getting back into the swing of things. And they've got a new single to release. And Josh reached out and was like, "Hey, I want to do like a release party for the single." I, I love Josh today. I love that whole band today. Every they're all four amazing. of those guys are amazing. Yeah, you know Jim's a shit. He's a crazy good drummer. And it's funny drummer. because Witness. Zach from Witness Marks actually tried out to be in Venus Invictus before really? Witness Marks became a thing. Okay, I didn't so know that. So they have known each other. Yeah. So I've, I've said this about Venus Invictus before. Like individually, they're four of the most talented people in in this area. I mean, watching Emily pay, play bass is like it's hard to watch anything else going on stage when she's playing bass. She's so fucking right. good. Right. You know, I've never then, paid that much attention to a bass player ever. Yeah, but then you've got Josh <laughs> over here just riffing away, and it's like, my God, how do they put all that together? Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. they're a progressive metal band. Yeah. So obviously, <laughs> and and then so we're trying to put this show together, and like everyone that kind of fits on bills with them already had shows within a couple of months so it was like well how they, we need to put a lineup together but how do we find the right bands to put on the show and i had to i had to reach out to missy to get involved to, to help put it together and we've got a killer lineup we, we ended do. up with a killer show it, absolutely and that's on Ju- saturday june 8th yep um, um also dub cage has a show coming up at amos's with killer koi forever may fall and american, american theory, theory. American um, Theory is a badass yeah. fucking band. They are. They're, 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 they're kicking ass right now. They really are. We played are. a show with them. With we played us. a couple of shows with those guys. Yeah. Um, back with The Light Divided and um, a couple of the other. Shun uh, the Raven. Uh, yeah, Shun the Raven. Yep. Uh, and yeah, yeah, Shun. And then well, who's the, um, Jared's new band? Um, it'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, next Friday. Yeah. 
at, um, 50 Flies has one out in High Point next Friday um, at 1614. Uh, there's tons of them. Strike's out. got a show coming up with Flaw. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's Strike it. Tower's going to be on, which I saw that one. And I saw it was a cutthroat, and I was like, why didn't you call me, man? That would have been so cool. But I know why. It's because we can't you know, we can't get enough people in here to make that worthwhile. But, um, but yeah, keep up with creative music management on social media. Uh, Scars remain. All the bands, you know, you'll, you know, we're posting constantly upcoming shows. And be a part of the community. Come support us and come support Web Street School on Saturday, May 25th for the second annual Rooster Olympics. Peace and love.